Welcome, everybody, across the spotlight. I'm Brother Dan Goodwin. We got an exciting show. I mean that exciting show today. You're going to want to see what we have for you. We got a special guest coming in just for a few minutes, and you're not going to want to miss it. We're going to be talking about redemption today. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Brother Goodwin. This is Dr. Charles Hilton, our co-host. We have an exciting show for you today. Doc, what's your what's your 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 statement you always say? It's all about redemption. It's all about redemption. And boy, are we gonna hit redemption today. I'll tell you about that in just a moment. We've got a book here we're gonna share with you. And uh, but before we do that, Doc, this apostasy thing that everybody's ordering is is Really getting out of hand here. I've been having to work to put this thing together. <laughs> you need to um, work. So this is on the website, processspotlight.com. You probably can't see that very well. And uh, there's three sermons in here, one by your pastor, Brother Mark, about apostasy, a study of the book of Jude. I've got my little thing in here, a chapter about angels in the book of Jude, where I go verse by verse. And then you have your Matthew 24 outline, which is excellent. And people have been ordering this. It's donation or just get a donation of $25 on the website. And you'll see that if you go to the website. And uh, um, we also want to thank the audience, Doc. They've kept us going, kept another, us going. for another quarter. Amen. The money came in. We got the bill paid. We're good. We're paid up till the rapture now. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Amen. Know. And uh, these are exciting days. And uh, June is going to be four years for us here. Wow. That's hard to believe. It is. Four years here at, at Processing the Spotlight. And that's because of you folks who, uh, who sit down every now and then, write a check, put yep. it in the mail. <laughs> or you go to the website and you hit the donate button. Um, <clears throat> or you call the 800 number and you donate over the phone. It, it's because of God's people that we're on the air. Yep. It's a miracle. I mean, we're old-fashioned. You know, those of you that watch us, you know what we are. We're old-fashioned King, King James Bible believers, and and uh, what a blessing it's been. Doc, you don't get to see all the notes that come in. A lot of times the people that send checks, there'll be notes in there. Thank you for your ministry, please. Uh, I, and they tell us, a lot of times they, they tell us how they watch. <coughs> Excuse me. We got people on VTN that send us letters, CTN. There are a lot of people that watch us just on YouTube, Doc. Right. And, of course, we're on the radio, different places, and uh, we're on Cool TV in Minnesota. <laughs> and uh, we're on some other Internet networks that I, I don't even know how to describe what they are. Um, there's people that have asked, hey, can we play your show on our network? And so we're out there, and, uh, and we appreciate it. And it's because of God's people. It's because of you and your, and your su support and your being a partner with us that we're here. Amen. We have a new network we're going to be on. Uh, in fact, we're on now, and uh, I don't have that information in my head to rattle it off, but, uh, but it's an Internet thing, um, and I'll tell you about that as soon as I can. Um, but anyway, I think it's bbsradio.com or something like that. Um, maybe we'll put that on the screen later. My wife can add that later so that you'll know what we're talking about, because obviously I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, don't, I think it's BBS. We know that. We, we, we learn that every now, week. Now what listen, are you talking about? I, I opened that door, and you walked right through it and ran me over. I don't blame you a bit, Doc. Hey, I'd have man. done the same thing. Uh, um, the topic today, and I thought of you, Doc, when I, when I decided to do this. I know this is something that's big with you. Uh, you have a, a thing in your, um, your Walk Through Time mm -hmm. DVDs. Yeah. That Monday night was precious. I mean, uh, the, how you brought out redemption in that story. Yeah. I sat there and cried like a baby uh, when I watched that. One, saw it live right there at the church. And uh, this is one of those kind of things. I've got a good friend um, named William P. Grady. Um, he's older than I. He was one of my professors at Bible college. And he's written a book. In fact, let me have this camera um, and I'll uh, so they can see the picture of the book because you won't... You won't see this very well. She'll put the picture up. Beautiful cover. This cover uh, is, is made to represent Acts chapter 16, verse 31. 
Remember the jailer who uh, all the cells, there was an earthquake, God caused an earthquake, all the cells opened, everybody, all the prisoners were free. <coughs> the, the jailer really thought he was going to die that day. And, uh, and he comes in and he kneels before, uh, comes before Paul and Silas, and he says, what must I do to be saved? That's the, that's the title of the book. Um, Brother Grady called me. We talked on the phone. I've talked to him several times since. And uh, he told me about the book. I said, hey, I, I want to I see that. And uh, I read this last night, to be honest with you. It's only about 60 pages. Um, I think there's 140 pages, but he's got stuff at the back. He's got the John and Romans in the back um, and some other stuff there. Um, but it's basically 60 pages, 10 chapters. And he says this is for lost people. And it really is. And when you read through it, you'll see he's talking to lost people and he's, he's, he's stringing them along, taking them through the, through the plan of salvation. And it's really something. And uh, I won't take the time to read the back cover of the book. But uh, Dr. Bill Grady was one of my professors way back in the 1980s. Uh, I'm, I'm older than you think. Um, in the 80s in Bible college, William Grady was one of the men that I really looked up to. He was a big encouragement to me as a young preacher boy, learning, uh, learning the ropes there. And the classes that I had with him, I'll never forget them. I still rattle stuff off to people that I got from his classes. And uh, this is an excellent book for lost people. And, but, I, but I'm telling you, saved people will get a blessing out of this too. I, I, I mean, I got very emotional last night, especially chapter 5, and I'm going to tell you about that in, uh, in today's program. I'm going to share with you one of the most precious analogies of salvation I've ever seen. I mean, it's powerful, and we'll share that with you. But, but I got a treat for you before we do that. Dr. Bill Grady did a little clip for us. I think it's two minutes, and uh, he ex he's going to explain the chapters in the book, and you'll get to meet him. You'll get to see him sitting on his porch in Tennessee, and he did this for us. We appreciate it, and we, we've got the clip, and we're going to play it for you. So here it is. Howdy, neighbor. Dr. Bill Grady here coming from my uh, Smoky Mountain safe house. I'm here to give you a last-minute infomercial uh, for my new book, What Must I Do to Be Saved? We had 11,000 come in the first printing just uh, about a week ago, and over 6,000 of those 11,000 went out within 48 hours, pre-sold. So... God's really blessing this. We're approaching 7,000 at this time sold. It's, uh, if you don't know about the book, it's uh, only 140 pages, and it's written for lost people. But uh, the first 65 pages I wrote, the rest of it is a John and Romans. It's got a QR code on the copyright page uh, for your uh, listening pleasure. Free audio book. I read all 10 chapters. I'll read you the uh, table of contents. Sometimes folks say, I got a, I have a booklet about how to be saved. How is this different? This is me writing 10 chapters explaining the gospel in my own style. Most of you know my material from previous books. So I write up with the common man in mind. Here's the table of contents. A rope of sand. That's what George Whitfield called trying to get to heaven on works. The passing grade. The divine dilemma. Spiritual death row. Just and the Justifier, The Other Place, that's the chapter on hell, What Must I Do to Be Saved, Eternal Security, What to Do After You Get Saved, and Chapter 10, A Final Caution. These books are priced so, so inexpensively, if you get a case of 60, preachers listening out there, it's uh, $360 plus shipping. That's about $5.97 a book. So this is not something to pass out at a bus stop like a gospel track. But it's a uh, fine-tuned fine uh, uh, gospel soul-winning tool to hand to someone that you know, somebody that trusts you. They'll read it maybe under the blanket with a flashlight, but they'll read it nonetheless. All right, so you've met my good friend, Dr. William P. Grady, we call him, William P., and uh, he's written several big, thick books. I mean, uh, if you Google his name, you'll, you'll find... He's written a book on the King James. He's written uh, just some, some amazing stuff. And uh, we're privileged and honored to uh, uh, get to share this with you today. 
And uh, we have ordered a whole case. We have them now. We got a whole case of these books. And here's what we want to do. And we're going to explain some, we're going to share some out of the book here for you. Um, beautiful cover. Um, the the Acts 16 scene there with Paul and Silas and the jailer asking the question, what must I do to be saved? The question of all questions. By the way, the greatest place to go in the Bible to show somebody how to be saved is, is right there. Here's a man that actually asks, what must I do? And of course, he mentions in the book, there's nothing you can do. Nothing. <laughs> you, you do nothing to get saved. You receive something. Just believe it. Yep. yep. And, and he mentions that in the book. We may, we may get to it. I highlighted a lot of stuff in here. We'll never get to, to, to it all, but uh, I do want to share some, some highlights from the book with you. But you can go to the website, ProstonSpotlight.com, and uh, you can get the book. You'll see it right there on the front page. There's two ways to get this. If you just want one, you want to read it, that's fine. $15 free shipping. We'll ship it right to you. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do, though. I'm going to ask you to trust me on this. Uh, Brother Grady asked me to trust him when I ordered him. He said, look, if you don't like the book, send the case back. And so, but, but you know, it's, it's 10 times better than I thought it was going to be. When I got done reading this last night, I said, my goodness, this book, he, he, he hit it out of the park. This is right on, right there on the bottom shelf. If, if a person can't get saved after reading this, he probably, he, he probably can't get saved. So um, anyway, um, go to the website. We're, gonna, we're, we're offering five of these for $50, free shipping. So that's less than 10 bucks a book. Five of them. In other words, one for you. And one for four of your loved ones that you want to give this book to in hopes of leading to them to the Lord. I've got several people right now I'm going to send the book to in hopes that uh, this may rattle them and get them to, to receive the Lord. And uh, boy, trust me on this. This book is awesome. So, Doc, let's... Uh, <laughs> Let's well, talk about it's this. It won't, won't only be good for that, but it'd be good for any Christian to have a better understanding about how to do the same thing yeah. in sharing the gospel. Yeah. Well, what's that song, you know, the, the saved like to hear it just as yeah. much as the lost do? I forget what song. Amazing that. Grace, isn't it? I don't know. No. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. there's a song, you know, the, the, you know, we love hearing it over and over, over again, again, too. And, uh, boy, the illustration. To tell the here. old, old story. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I was reading this, I'll tell you, I told him on the, I texted him after I finished the book. And uh, I was quite emotional, but I, but I told him this morning on the phone, I said, I was emotional, but, but I meant everything I said. I said, this, this is your best work in these last days, maybe his final work. Mm -hmm. Because if the rapture is soon, what Brady, Brother Grady has done is he's left us, he's, he's given us a book to get people saved mm -hmm. in these last hours of the church age. Amen. And, uh, and he really did, boy, when you get to chapter five in here, you gotta, you gotta strap in. It's powerful. And, uh, so I highlight some stuff. Let, let me just throw some stuff out to you. And I know you haven't read the book no, yet. No, I haven't. Cause I just gave you one yeah. a few minutes ago and, uh, I'm anxious for you to read. I think you're going to enjoy it. The very first thing he says in chapter one is this, the initial purpose of this book is to deprogram the reader from man-made religion. That's exactly right. Everyone's oh, got their idea of what I must do to go to heaven. Yeah, I got to I got to be baptized. I got to go All to church. And I got to live good. Yep. Uh, he's got a quote from Bill O'Reilly in here, and uh, I want to read this because this is what a lot of people think. You all know Bill O'Reilly, mm -hmm. right? The the radio, yep. used to be on Fox News. He's still out there. He's a good guy, but he's 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 most <laughs> most assuredly, if he believes what he says here, he's lost. I know it. And uh, if you're listening, Bill, you, you contact us. We'll help you with this. Uh, Bill O'Reilly stated uh, concerning the uh, concerning the subject of religion, it all comes down to what you want to believe. So I'm a Roman Catholic, and I want to believe in a just God. And I want to believe that after you die, you're judged on whether you are good or bad as a human being by, uh, by being a just and all-knowing God, and that it is your good human being that you're rewarded. If you're not, you suffer. That's what I want to believe. And uh, in other words, he yeah, Bill it's Riley, what he wants to believe. It's not what the Bible teaches. He, he thinks yeah. when you get to heaven, if you've done more good than mm -hmm. bad, the old, a, lots of uh, most yeah. religions are yeah. based on that. Yeah. 
Yep, every religion out there is is a do religion. I got to do this. I got to do that. There's only one that says it's a done it's religion. Done. Yeah, amen. Yep, he uh, he has a section. Come now, let us reason together. He's reasoning with us that mm -hmm. we're sinners. He reasons with us from James and other places that if you've broken one law, you're guilty of yep. them all. Yep. Listen, we were born sinners. We were born that way. We're guilty. The only way to get rid of our sin is to have a, a, a Savior, a Messiah, to pay our sin. They have debt. to be paid for. Yeah. He said uh, of the 31,102 verses in the Bible, if I could quote only one scripture to help guide you and reason your way through this utter absurdity that lost sinners can somehow earn their way to heaven, it would be the Apostle Paul's inspired words in Galatians 2, 21. Mm. And it says this, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Yeah. In other words, if you could live it and earn your way to heaven, Christ didn't have to Wouldn't die. Wouldn't have been any reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it gives a lot of different verses here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep going because there's only so much time. D.L. Moody's got some good quotes in here. D.L. Moody said this. There are only two letters difference between... D.L. Moody was talking to a, a Mormon that was trying to convert him. Mm -hmm. And he said to that Mormon, he said, there are only two letters difference between my religion and yours. You spell yours do, D-O. I spell mine done, D-O-N-E. Amen. And uh, Christ having done for us what we could not do ourselves. Amen. He's got uh, uh, some stuff about George Whitfield. I love this, and I wish I could read it all, but we can't. Um, D, uh, George Whitfield was heard to say this one day while he was preaching. He said, works, works. A man get to heaven by works? I would as soon think of climbing to the moon on a rope of sand. And that's the title of this chapter. Yeah. A rope of sand which is going to let yeah. you down. You ain't going to get there. Nope. Um, George Whitfield from the, from the Great Awakening mm -hmm. in the 1700s. And uh, he says here in chapter 2, uh, the passing grade, he says, uh, give some, he gives some information about his, uh, 1971, his conversion. And, and he actually uh, knew Jill Stevenson and he worked for the same company that she was in. Jill is mm -hmm. the lady that's going to marry um, Joe Biden. She becomes Jill Biden. And he, uh, he's, he's met her when she was like in really? her 20s. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> and uh, so that's in there. Um, the, the eternal question, what must I do to be saved? The Bible makes it abundantly clear that should any person opt to place his or her faith for getting to heaven in their own track record on earth, they will need a passing grade of 100%. That's impossible. Yeah. You'd have to be perfect. Absolutely. From the, from the time you're born or conceived in the womb to the time that's you die. That's exactly right. And, uh, and there's nobody that's ever done. Whosoever shall keep the whole law yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. Yes. James 2.10. And uh, so he talks about that. Um, and this is all good beginning stuff. See, he's leading the lost person that's mm -hmm. reading this. He's, lead, he's helping them see you're a sinner. Living good will not absolve you of that sin. He, so he's taking them on a journey. He gets, to, he gets to chapter 3 here. And, of course, he's just told them, look, if, you've, if you sinned one time, you're guilty. Yep. Nothing you can do about it. So chapter 3, the divine dilemma. And, uh, you know, in other words, our condition. You know, what are we going to do? Um, he quotes a song here, and, uh, and he talks about... Uh, um, what is this song here? Let me get it. This is a famous song. Oh, the love of, um, the love of God is greater than, far than tongue or pen can ever tell. Amen. He says the last stanza of that, ver of that song was, was thought, was found in a prison cell and, and they, and they saved it and, and it became part of the song. <laughs> and this is powerful. Look what it says. Could, could we with ink the, the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill? And every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Mm -hmm. no, uh, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. Amen. That was uh, powerful. He just has a lot of things like mm -hmm. that in, in the book. And uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here the father is basically saying that he would rather have Jesus die. Listen to this. He, God would rather have Jesus die 
than to have you go to hell. That's good. That's powerful. That's true. And if that's where you wind up, you would have landed there over his son's dead body. Amen. Trampling the blood of Jesus yeah. under their feet. Yeah. And, uh, uh, boy, there's something about Tim Tebow that I didn't know. He writes about that in here. Um, pretty, pretty interesting. But I don't want to take it all the way. There's an interesting story about the football player, Tim Tebow, and uh, that I'd, I'd never heard this before. Um, very interesting. Um, over here, he says, uh, were the Lord to allow even one transgression to go unpunished, one sin, mm -hmm. the entire universe would implode. He's talking about would God just ignore it because he loves no. man and let somebody in. He says if God did that, if he allowed even one sin to go unpunished, and either I got to pay for it or Jesus pays yep. for it, the entire universe would implode because God would then cease to be God. An ancient legal pro proverb attributed to the first century Latin writer, like uh, Mr. Cyrus, escapulates this concept with the phrase, the judge is condemned when the guilty is acquitted. And boy, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're seeing that today, aren't yeah. we? Corrupt judges. And there's a Latin phrase for that, but it means the judge is condemned when the guilty is acquitted. And I think the opposite would be true. The mm -hmm. judge is condemned when the innocent is found guilty. Uh, that would come back on the judge yep. as well, wouldn't it? And, uh, um, and Doc, you feel free to, to pipe in. I know oh, uh, you're, um, we won't have much more time, so. Yeah, God, God, uh, for God to devise a plan that would kill two birds with one stone, he had to find a way to get us into heaven. Mm -hmm to satisfy his love, yet without jeopardizing his holiness. Aren't so you, He had that plan from the beginning of the world. Yeah, yeah. and, he, and, he, and he has, he, that's the balance here. God loves us. He doesn't want us to yeah. die and go to hell. But God is just, and he cannot turn well, his back and on you can't, sin. And one of the attributes of God doesn't override another attribute of God. Yeah, and so the, he found a way to balance both of them. Yes. He's going to send his son to die not for his sin, but for the world's sin. That's why on the cross, uh, the Lord said, why hast thou forget, forget, uh, forgotten? Yep. Turn your back on yep. me. Because he took our sin upon him. And uh, we get to chapter 4, spiritual death row. In other words, he's, he's letting us know that if you're alive today and you're not saved, you're on death row. You're going to die and you're going That's to go good. to hell. You're on yep. death row right now. You see how he's drawing Everybody's the person. Everybody's born headed to hell. Yep. See how he's going through each chapter, taking the lost person that's reading this on a little journey. Mm -hmm. Now he's letting that guy know, you're right now you're on death row. You're waiting your death sentence. It may take 10 years. It may, mm -hmm. you know, people are on death row for many years. He says, I know a godly preacher in a southern state uh, who has a heavy burden. While some Christians have seen their children sent to prison for various crimes, this aged man has a saved son who, is being, who has been sitting on death row for decades. True story. I cannot imagine how difficult this is for them. He says, well, according to Scripture, for you to gain that, the answer to that eternal question, what must I do to be saved, it is essential for you to discover the shocking reality that you too are sitting on death row only on, in a spiritual sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, we may not be in a prison waiting for the guillotine or, yeah. the, or, the, or the electric chair, but we're, we're, we're on death row because as long as we're not saved, our, we're, headed for, yeah. to, we're headed to death. And hell. We're headed for a separation from God. Yeah. yeah. So there's so much more here, but uh, uh, <laughs> there's a, something from Olive B. Green in here that's pretty You better get to chapter 5. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's next. Right out of time. Um, the most important prerequisite for getting saved is to realize you are lost. I've said yep. that a thousand times, um, and that's good. All yep. right, so with just a few minutes left, Just and the Justifier, Chapter 5, this is the one that got me. And uh, you are now about to learn the pivotal truth. So far, we've discovered from the Bible that our perceived good works uh, could never enable us to be admitted to heaven solely because the Lord's standard of perfection is, is unattainable. Uh, we learn that when push comes to shove, God's character traits of holiness, justice, and wrath will overrule his love every time. It just so happens there is one possible way out of the dilemma, and he gives the story 
from, uh, from Charles Dickens, The Tale of Two Cities. I had never heard this mm -hmm. story. Um, or maybe I have, maybe I've seen a movie about it, but uh, he gives a story, but there's two men, they're in love with the same woman, the, the other guy gets her, and the other guy becomes a drunk, and long story short, something happens, and, and the guy that married the woman gets, gets somehow accused or something, he, he's on death row, they're going to execute him, the, I think the next morning, and this guy, out of his love for that woman and, and his friend, because they're friends, he decides to go to the prison, and they look a lot alike, he visits him. He has some kind of drug where he puts the guy to sleep or something, and he changes clothes with them. And they take the other guy out like he was ill or something, and he's left there, and he's executed the next day. And, uh, and, uh, and he points out that, uh, mm. yeah. that he did that out of love yeah. for his friend, and of course the, the woman as well. And, uh, and he, he, he applies that to that's what Jesus did. Jesus took our place. He did. We were on death row. We trusted him as our Savior. He, he took my sin upon him. Amen. Now, let me read this uh, in closing. It also represents the transition from the dramatic closing scene of the, of the fictional characters swapping, uh, swapping places, illustrating a powerful Bible truth. As we have already established, every human being in history has landed on God's death row, and they reach the age of accountability. Uh, once again, no matter how much the Lord may love you, his justice cannot go unpunished. Uh, uh, his sins cannot go unpunished. Notice it doesn't specify exactly who has to die. But, uh, and then listen to this. Uh, when the condemned sinner uh, could get someone to take his place, the punisher in the state would, uh, would satisfy, uh, has to satisfy God's justice. One condemned prisoner cannot take the place of another condemned prisoner. Only someone who has no sin could do that. Yes. And, uh, and then let me close with this one statement, and this, this got me last night. Consequently, the sinner's only hope would be to find a sinless fellow human, one who'd be willing to make the exchange. Of yep. course, good luck with that one. Uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of, Lord, of the glory of God. But wait, I hear an I hear. An angelic corrections officer coming towards your cell with a message. Prisoner, prisoner uh, Goodwin, prisoner Hiltabittle, you have a visitor. Amen. Whew. Who's I'm, the visitor? I'm the sure. Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure glad I've, I've allowed that to happen. He's knocking on the door and he says, I want, to, I want to take your place. Yes or no? Be a great book for folks Whew. to have to share with the lost. Oh, well, there's so much more in there. and I, I tried to get what I could out. Folks, I hope, uh, hope you'll get the book. Um, get it for your lost loved ones. Amen. Get one for you and get one for some lost. Time is running out. Amen. Well, folks, keep your eyes on them sky. 